so it's it's Christmas Day. Even though for you this is the day after. You, you get it. All these videos are on like a, a one day delay. But Christmas breakfast consumed, gifts given and opened. Everybody just kind of napped around all day and less than fortunately for most lifters any gym that you could have had access to is just fucking closed down. Um, but not all gyms. I know a lot of you guys, if you're, um, if you go to a 24 hour gym key fob style, then you're good because nobody's, nobody has to work there. You just do the key fob and go in. You know, they trust you to not destroy everything and they've got cameras where I guess if you do, they could follow up. Which I think more gyms could take from that, uh, from that style, but I understand there's a good amount of tomfoolery that always goes on when people are unsupervised, so not very surprising. But luckily, we've been granted access, granted special access. So rather than just do another basement lift, which today I've got chest, so I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't actually mind just ripping a lift in the basement. Tons of incline bench plus some dumbbell work. But a legit gym, that's going to be nicer. So I'm not actually sure what's in here. Um, might just be cables, might be freaking... I couldn't even tell you, i got to find out. Because I've never actually been in here before. But more than likely it's going to be better than the basement. I know for a fact there's dumbbells and cable machines. So... What else do I really need? I'll have to see how heavy the dumbbells go, of course, but I mean... Eh. If there's no, like, inclined bench that I like, maybe today could just be more of a squeezing, fly, cable work style chest day. It's, I mean, I've got a bit of a tendency to really push it weight-wise on chest, and I could tell after the last chest day video, at uh, not chest day video, but the last chest workout I did, I went real heavy. I was going for four plates on the Smith machine on a, for incline bench. And it felt good when I was doing it. Like I didn't have any kind of moment where my shoulders like cracked or had like a, you know, just some kind of fucking moment of incident. But I could tell the day after my left rotator cuff was just a little bit, just a little tender. Not in any specific part. Like, if, you, if you've had rotator cuff issues before, you know when you move around, you kind of hit a spot where you have like a, a little jolt or a pop. Nothing like that. And honestly, I think it's not even because of the weight. I think I just flared my elbows out a little bit too much on those heavy sets. So, I wouldn't mind potentially doing a more squeezing biased day just to potentially give it some rest. But... I mean, for the most part, if it feels all right, you're probably good. And then inversely to that, if something hurts, don't do it. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty simple freaking approach, but apparently it's relatively difficult to implement. So, other than that, I mean, we just kind of have to see what happens in there. Since it's just chest, I'm only hitting one muscle group, it's really not going to be that long of a lift. I mean, I could foresee... Oof. I mean, if I get in the zone, it could be 30 minutes, but to be determined. So for you and for me, you know, let's go see what's in there and see how this little gym looks. All right, so I'm not going to try to push it to four plates. That's more than I can handle. Three plates and a 25, however, that's, that's within an amount of weight, which I've got maybe not mastery on for sure, but... I can exert some serious freaking force. Some shiv blah, blah blah blah. Let's just turn on Eye of the Tiger, stop messing up my words, and make this a good opener. Okay. Uh. 
I don't think one more was going up. Let's drop the three plates. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. I think let's just do two and done. Oh my goodness. Whew. Yeah, let's move on to maybe a superset into a machine chest press. I think that might feel pretty cool. All right, so I think before I jump into a set of that incline chest press, I'll do some sort of in front of the body. I almost want to say they're not flies. It's almost its own sort of weird movement. Basic premise, you grab some dumbbells, you got them in front of your quads like this, you're looking at the mirror, and you try to pull the dumbbell upwards over here like you're trying to uppercut somebody but only flex your pecs. And I can feel this in my upper chest. Honestly, it's like, in terms of the intensity of the squeeze, I can't think of a movement that beats it. But it doesn't really have a big stretched position, so it's not the best movement. But something to throw in, at least if you can feel it. Okay. Oh my gosh. One more. Okay, let's do some pec deck next. Make sure to squeeze the first few reps when I'm strong. Burn out with partials. A very basic approach. One more. I'm all for a squeezing set. I'm all for holding at the top for a second and then doing your reps nice and controlled. But I, I mean, I'm not saying I don't like it. That's not what I'm saying. I like those in combination with kind of a fucking throw the weight around set. You know, something about sitting here with, I mean, a lot of weight, of course, I'm not going super light and just really pumping out rep after rep until I get a point of fatigue where I just can't move. I mean, it just gives me such a gnarly pump, man. Maybe that's just me though. So you gotta figure out what kind of sets work best for you. So. Okay, I think 
Let's finish with a set of cable press, then go check the pump. All right, I thought this would be the last one, but I might actually do two of these, just because I don't know, I don't feel completely pumped. Like I'm definitely more pumped than normal. That's fucking without a doubt, but I'll kind of have to go by feel. Like it's sort of something you kind of get an internal gauge for, or maybe like a pressure gauge or some shit. Or I'm like, this is fully pumped, and I know I'm not there yet, and I want to just get as close to there as possible. So let's see how one feels. What do you think I'm about to say? Okay. Now we can go check the pump. I feel like that's about as much as I'm going to get. Let's get the exposure just down enough to be freaky. Let's see how we're looking pump wise. So my chest day used to be chest and side delts and my back day would be back and rear delts. Um, I've been skipping front delts for a very long time. They're just overdeveloped and kind of the same thing with my shoulders just in, in general, like doing a back double bicep shot. They're just way ahead of my arms. So that's why I've been skipping them. You know, I wouldn't just want to skip a muscle group for no reason. And definitely not like, because I just don't want to hit it. You know, it's just, I'm not all about pure mass. I know that may sound kind of crazy to say, but I want everything to be in at least a, a relative sense of proportion. I don't want my shoulders twice as big around as my arms are. That just looks silly. So if my arms need to come up, then I'm going to chill on shoulders and let my arms come up. So that's why I haven't been hitting delts as of late, but I'm sure I'll add them in every so often, just, well, not even out of necessity, but kind of just out of boredom in a way, right? I think, you know, I like working out. So if I haven't hit shoulders for a long time, I kind of miss it. I was thinking about hitting them today, but I'll save them for next chest day, maybe, or maybe I'll just throw them in every other week. They don't really need too much more work. I mean, they're not behind in any sense of the freaking word. But let's get this down just another smidge. Mm. Not disappointed with that. Oh my goodness. I can tell I'm definitely a little dehydrated, which that's on me. Oof. What else says they're most muscular? Yeah. Okay. Pumped. Tired. I'm ready for B. Oh, Jesus. It's not even that late. I was about to say I'm ready for bed. No, 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 no. I got to get some meals in first. I think on the drive back home, there is a high probability. There's a 70% forecast that a Caniac with three extra buns will land directly into my passenger seat. Now, I'm no meteorologist, but I would trust that prediction. So let's just, uh, let's just jump in the car. Whoosh. Another, would I go so far as to say baller lift? Would I go so far as to say epic lift? Maybe not, I've had, I've had crazier ones than that before. Let's just call that a good lift. Let's just call that one a good little lift. The likes of which, which I will capitalize on by going back to the crib and eating 
an exorbitant amount of treats. Uh, I'm not really sure what kind. I've, uh, I've been having trouble getting food down. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe I'm just eating in a weird way. Well, okay, obviously I'm eating in a weird way. But I mean weirder than weird. Like, maybe my timing is off or something? Because I don't know, I just don't want to get food down my gullet. Might have to start taking drastic measures. A.K.A. You know, get a pint of ice cream and instead of putting it in the freezer, put it in the fridge and then just give it a little chug ski. That's a thousand calories in about four seconds, so not a bad technique. And actually saying it out loud, I think I'm going to have to implement that. Along with right, steaks, eggs, milks, chickens, high quality sources of protein. And then, you know, I think as long as you're not putting on a crazy excessive amount of body fat, eat some treats. But I will say, obviously, things can be taken too far. If I was eating all my treats like normal, but I was getting real soft, like way too soft, then that's my cue to say like, oh crap, dude, I'm eating, I'm eating too much, right? Uh, I think, <laughs> you know, historically across the board, eating too much in a bulking context for a lifter is hardly, um, you know, a problem. Anybody who's having trouble with gaining weight, the problem is always getting food down on a consistent basis. But you can eat too much, right? So if your appetite, well, this is worth a whole tangent on its own, but I'll get into it after. If just for whatever reason, you've got a big appetite, that's your deal, you know how to eat. In a bulking context, that is the way to do it. Chow down, lift hard, rest. You're going to gain some substantial amounts of tissue. But then it's going to be a little bit trickier for you to diet down, you know, and get leaner. So when it comes to people talking about like, oh, well, you know, I'm naturally have, I naturally have more body fat because of, you know, my, um, I got thyroid. You know, everybody loves bringing up thyroid imbalances or whatever. I, just, I don't know. But... There is a little bit of legitimacy to that sort of argument in the sense that some people, for just a whole variety of reasons, it could be mental, it could actually be physical with hormones and whatever else, but, you know, person A could be, you know, satisfied with eating barely at maintenance, if not maybe a little bit lower, like for whatever reason their appetite just has them eating, you know, not that much food, they're not really hungry by nature it's going to be way easier for them to stay lean. You know, if you see a dude who's just walking around diced, I'm not even talking about a lifter. I'm just talking about a normal skinny-ass dude. Just for whatever reason, his body's telling him, just eat this much and you're good, right? That's his daily routine. He eats that much food and then he can go to bed like, I. that's just a normal day, right? But some people, they're fucking hungry, man. They can't be quenched. They got to they gotta just keep chowing down, you know? Which, again, bulking, I'm very envious. I'm envious of that guy. I want to fucking put down like a vacuum cleaner. Or put food down like a vacuum cleaner. Right? Like a shop vac. Just so I can make it disappear. Um, and that's just... You know, that's something where... Obviously, there's a positive on either end. Blah, blah, blah. On either end of the spectrum. Right? The skinnier dude, the guy with a low appetite... Metabolism does not matter. That's just a fucking buzzword. The guy with a low appetite, it's going to be easier for him to just stay lean. But he's going to have trouble putting food on. Putting food on. He's going to have trouble putting weight on because for him, getting food into his system is a fucking chore. He's, I eat so much food, bro. And then he had like 2,000 calories that day. And that's not really conducive with becoming a freak. And then the guy who can naturally put down 5,000 calories... Or not naturally, you get what I'm saying. Like he can just put down that much food like nothing. For him, even approaching a fucking calorie deficit is like walking on hot coals. So that's something where you've got to kind of look at your own. I want not really your own build. Let's just say your own situation, and kind of understand like, okay, for me it's pretty easy to stay in a deficit. It's easy for me to be lean. Eating, that's where my challenge lies. So I got to put some effort into making sure I can find the right sort of foods and stuff like that, which will actually let me put down enough food to gain weight. 
and then the other way around. Right? The dude who's got trouble dieting, he's going to have to put in much more effort if he wants to lose body fat than, you know, Pete, the 100-pound hooper, who is fucking a bodybuilding show ready lean at 120 pounds. So that's, um, that's sort of what I'm saying there. You know, not everybody is built equally. Right? People get different strengths in different areas. So you've got to be able to look at yourself and say, okay, these are my strong points. Cruising, sweet. i got to work on these a little bit harder than everybody else. And that's just, I mean, that's up to you, man. So don't, uh, don't get too jealous of the dude who's lean because his ass probably can't eat as much food as you. But you, you see what I'm saying. You, uh, you get the basic idea. So I'm going to go home, eat some treats, put other foods, take on my vitamins. I've got an absurd amount of laundry. I don't really want to talk about it. And then chill. I've been trying to find a new show. I don't I don't know if fucking I don't know if Invincible is on hiatus, but they've only released four episodes and I'm kind of freaking itching for the rest of them. Uh Is there how much more Jujutsu Kaisen's coming out this season? That's pretty cool. But that's just that's one episode a week. That's not enough for me. I need a show to like binge watch. And don't say Breaking Bad, don't say Better Call Saul, don't say The Sopranos, don't say One Piece, don't say Naruto, don't say, um, I don't know, I guess those are some of the big ones. I've already seen those. Or I'm already, I guess not One Piece, I'm a little bit behind, but whatever. And now I know what you're going to say. You're going to say um, Game of Thrones, but I want to wait. I don't know, I don't want to watch Game of Thrones right now. So, I need something. Maybe it's better I don't waste my time watching shows anyway. It kind of distracts me from getting my meals down, I think. But let's get home, get rested, and get ready for cardio in the morning, which let's not even go down that little rant. I'll spare you. So let's, uh, let's get out of here. I'll see you next time.